Hi guys, it's Django here. Today I'd like to show you a reactor plugin called Form by a native instrument. It's sort of a granular synthesizer with some pretty unique features. And I keep mentioning it to people and not everyone seems to know what it is. So I figured it'll be pretty cool to make a quick video on it and show you what it's capable of. I'm gonna start off by creating a track in Reaper. This is very similar to when you go create virtual instrument on new track. I just have a couple of settings that I like, including having a recontrol MIDI here with pitch and mod wheel so I can automate them using envelopes rather than in the MIDI editor. So I'm gonna open up Reactor 6, uh, make sure it's the VSTi version, the instrument version, and not an effect. This is new. I think I must have gotten an update. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm, interesting. Seems to just load what I had last selected in Reactor. So here is the initial patch for form. Uh, let me record enable the track. It's quite a low octave. Let's go a couple up. Four. Four. So you'll notice that every time I press a note, four, 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 four. it starts the at the sort of start of that phrase. And then it starts looping, which is this motion curve down here. So this sort of playback cursor follows this motion. And at the moment, the speed is one, which is basically at the original speed of the sample. You can sort of make it slower than the sample or faster than the sample two would be double as fast. Um, you can also go by Hertz or by BPM, or you can manually scan through that motion using this control. Four. So you get some idea of the potential of this thing. There is more to it though. On the sounds page, you get to do various cool things to your samples, uh, including pitch tracking and formant tracking. So I'm gonna load the initial preset. I get to it by, it also hasn't really remembered the setting, oh well. If I click on form in presets, you'll see there's an initial preset. If you double click on presets, there's a bunch of different categories with lots more cool sounds in it. But for now, I'm going to load the initial one. And if you haven't loaded form yet and you first load the initial one, it'll come to this page here, sample select. And it'll ask you to drag and drop a sample. I find form works best with uh, monophonic tonal sounds. In other words, not chords and like symbols and bells with sort of inharmonic overtones tend to confuse it a bit because of the pitch tracking and formant tracking. So I've searched here for Vox in my Flice, the Splice folder um, in Reaper's media browser. And let's see what we have here. House. Yeah, yeah. Searching for... Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. This could work. Um, you can preview the sample with this little preview button. Yeah, yeah. And trim it. So maybe I just want it to start somewhere in the middle. Oops. Oops. Uh, I can still go back to that uh, sample select page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you basically have to oh, yeah. hold the preview button to hear the full length of it. I'm gonna to go to the beginning somewhere. Yeah, yeah. That'll do. Or maybe I just want the year, the second year. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. So now here is this motion at the moment. If I press a note, yeah. Yeah. you can hear that it's playing the sample at the same speed, regardless of pitch. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it is, yeah, and it's just playing a straight line. There is a curve editor, 
where you can change the sort of start and end points. You can add multiple, um, I forget how you zoom out. Grid snap, mm, there we go, sort of. There we go. No, no. So maybe we want this one to reverse. You can change the shape of the curve. There are different curve styles. You can flip the curve over here. Oh, it flips everything, okay. This is quite in depth. I haven't gotten too far into this. There are also a bunch of preset curves. Um, and then if you go into the motion editor, you'll see like that one's a simple one, but some of these have multiple stages. Um, I find those stepped ones quite interesting. But for now, I'm going to stick with the default one. And we'll adjust our end point a bit. Now you'll notice it's still got sort of the wavering pitch in the guy's voice. We can flatten that. With varying degrees of accuracy, this sounds pretty good. You can also flatten the formants. Let's undo the pitch and hear that on its own. Yeah. Without. Yeah. You can. Yeah. Yeah. You can also adjust it manually. Yeah. There's also an additive oscillator that follows the amplitude and pitch of the sample, which is quite cool. Um, you can sort of change its pitch relative to the sample in sort of harmonic. There's fifths. You can hear how this could be quite, it makes quite modern bass and sampled sort of sounds. We've got FM, which just adds some sort of a carrier signal to the initial oscillator. I'll take out that additive one. There's this shaper that kind of dulls it. And the multiply, which sort of sounds almost the opposite. So you can imagine this can make some pretty gnarly bass sounds. We can also make it a few octaves higher. Let's try 24. Uh, maybe we have this additive oscillator lower. So we can't go any lower on the keyboard. So let's bring this back down and set the keyboard up. Uh, we could turn it into a pad of sorts. Give it some release. Still sounds very vocal. If we flatten the formants, it'll sound less so. <laughs> no, I take that back. Uh, 
let's try. So even with the volume of the additive oscillator down, it seems to affect the FM pitch. So that's pretty cool. Getting into pad territory. Let's try the multiply knob. Yowzers. So we've gone from this yeah, yeah. to this. And let's add some effects. They've got some pretty cool reverb. This is the short reverb. Make it larger. can also assign modulation to any of the parameters if you hover over the little sort of tooltip let's assign this to a filter for example you click on one of these three sort of sources and let's go envelope two Cool, I hope that gives you an idea of the sort of scope of form with just one sample. We could also try and change up the sample. That could be interesting. down. Oh, doesn't go that low. Can change it here. And let's turn off the effect. Might make an interesting bass sound again. Let's try 12 again. This additive oscillator really adds a lot to the sound sometimes. You can also change it to a square.
mustn't forget that it follows the sort of shape of the sample. So if we do a small section, Cool, I hope you enjoyed that tour of form. There's another granular plugin that I quite like, which is in Reason called Grain. So I might take a look at that in a future video if you guys are interested. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I will catch you again soon. I have been a bit scarce lately. One of the reasons was my laptop wasn't coping with screen recording. I tried to do a track from scratch and it bottlenecked quite quickly. I'm now using a desktop, which I thought would be worse, but it seems I forgot how many cores it had or something. So it's actually a lot better. I'm really stoked. Looking forward to being able to do like whole tracks 